Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and I've got another printer review for you. This is the BCN 3D Sigma. It looks pretty cool. It prints pretty cool. Let's talk about it. Are you ready? Go. Ah, welcome back. This is the Sigma. It is an independent, dual-headed extruder that prints at a very large volume. This printer is from BCN 3D, and they've got a lot of cool products coming out of Europe. The obvious and, and, and most compelling feature about this printer is this dual-head design. Each of these nozzles operates independently from one another. It actually works really well. So as these nozzles move back and forth, to take care of any, any filament that may be left on the nozzle when switching back and forth, there's these little almost wiper blades here on each side, and the nozzle passes over the rubber wiper to clear away any filament. The filament is then held in this tiny little bucket on either side. And as the filament is held, the nozzle itself parks and then waits for the other nozzle to do its thing. As the other nozzle parks, this nozzle purges filament and then comes back across the wiper. So the nozzle at that point is completely primed and ready to lay down that filament. Besides that, there's also this build plate. The build plate is magnetic and it's held on with three magnets. The build plate itself is 210 by 297 and it'll go 210 millimeters tall. And while we're on specifications, each of the nozzles in this extruder setup is 0.4 millimeters in diameter. However, you can get 0.6 millimeter nozzles. Also, you should know it takes three millimeter filament for each extruder and that filament is brought through a Bowden tube and this is the direction that it goes. The filament is actually pretty ingenious in how it's set up. Here, let me show you. The filament itself is loaded through a tiny hole in the front. You load the filament through until it reaches the drive motor. The motor then says, okay, give it a little push. It engages and it brings the filament up through this tube and then gets it into the hot end. Each nozzle is capable of printing up to 280 degrees centigrade and the build plate itself is capable of reaching 100 degrees centigrade. In my tests, I found that the print speed between 40 and 60 millimeters per second is optimal and obviously I like to go faster and so usually I keep it at 60 proper. As with any printer review, I'm gonna show you some of the things I've printed with it. I'm then gonna tell you what I'm gonna like, and then I'm gonna tell you what I don't like, and at the end, I'm gonna give you some final thoughts. This situation is a little different, so stay tuned until the very end because I've got some, well, exciting news. Before I show you the models from this printer, I was able to get some footage on my iPhone of how the printer starts up bed levels and how it prints. So let me show those to you right now. Of the things I've printed, there aren't many, and that'll be explained at the very end. But first, this, and this is the Droughty Lizard, and I think you can find it on Thingiverse. BCN likes to use this as their example, and there's a reason why. It looks, it looks great. The, the dual colors are fantastic. There's no color bleed through, there's no contamination. It looks exactly like it should. The next model I printed was a two-color Benchy. Yeah, look at that. This Benchy is meant for dual extruders. It's got two colors, and it looks great. This model was the first model that I used the BCN 3D version of Cura to print with. There is some color contamination, but I think that is due to my inability to set the settings correctly rather than a machine problem. This is a two-color vase, and I found this on Thingiverse as well. As you can see, there's some color contamination in the whites, and again, I'm gonna attribute this to my inability to use the BCN 3D version of Cura effectively. It's still a great model, and it still turned out well. There is some stringiness, but again, that's from settings, not from a printer malfunction. 
Finally, I know no one was going to let me get away with all dual color prints, and so I printed what I thought would be an interesting piece to test a couple abilities. It is an almost full width, flat, one millimeter thick square. It's full plastic, and it uses a single extruder to produce all of the levels. It's not dual color at all. It turned out amazing. The finish is near perfect, and the lines as you can see, look great. There's no errors, no bubbles, and there's no lift in the corner. This model, albeit simple, turned out great. Let's move on to some of the things I really like about this printer. Well, to start off with, the build quality is excellent. It's a metal case. It's got some plastic on the bottom. The Z-axis is very, very firm and there's no wiggle in it whatsoever. The magnets that hold down the build plate are very effective and the build plate does not move. The dual independent extruders work near flawlessly and I really, really like how this design is done. I think it's very effective and I think it's an entirely great way to do multicolor printing. Now let's talk about some of the things that I don't particularly like. One, and I think this is very important, when these extruders go back and forth across the wiper blade here and deposit filament into the bins, those bins tend to fill up quite a bit and it's not uncommon for the extruder nozzle being hot to touch and pick up a loose piece of filament and bring it over to your print. As you can see, the wiper blade for the nozzle doesn't exist close enough to the side. So when filament strands poke up on the side opposite of what the nozzle's trying to wipe, it can sometimes bring those strands of filament over to the model. Usually it doesn't cause an issue, and I've only had it happen a couple times, but I think this is a problem that can be easily mitigated by emptying the bins Often. Also in the menu, you are able to change the purge settings, and that should affect how much filament is purged when the nozzle is parked. While I do like the build plate, and while I do think the magnets are effective, it is a little interesting trying to get it to firm up. Okay, there we go. There was a couple times where I started to print, and the build plate wasn't exactly where it needed to be, and the print failed gloriously. And that was just, I want to say, <laughs> That's my inability to use magnets. I know, I know. I'm almost 40. I should be able to use magnets. Lastly, the fan noise on this is extraordinary. Here, let me show you. Ready? I'm going to turn it on. It's starting up. Not too bad. You can get along with that, right? There we go. You hear that? It's actually quite loud. It's loud enough to where I can't have this in a room where we need to be doing something in the next room because it's too loud. I have to put it in a room that I can close the door on. Luckily, my office over here or the spare bedroom on this side of the house is perfectly capable of noise abatement and I can have that printer in there. However, I do think the fan noise is an issue and this printer can't be used in noise sensitive environments. It's safe to say this printer has the loudest noise profile from its fans I've ever used. Normally here is where I would give you my final thoughts, but I need to preface these because this printer I've only had for roughly 10 days. I don't think 10 days is adequate to give a full review for a printer as fully featured as this. Here's the story. My friend Preet from Designbox 3D contacted me and said, hey Joel, I have this BCN 3D Sigma printer. Could I send it to you for a few days to get your, your eyeballs on it, get some thoughts on it before I have to send it off to the next person? I was like, of course Preet, I can do that for you. And sure enough, it's gonna go back to Preet in a day or so. But in the meantime, I, I did get to play with this. I did get to print a few models. I think this is a very capable printer, and with the issues that I described aside, I think that I would personally own this printer if I could. The new developments in this are actually quite interesting. I was contacted by BCN 3D, and they know of my situation with Preet and how this was a loaner from Designbox 3D. 
They said that in the next couple weeks, most likely, they could get me a Sigma printer out to test and play with for a longer period of time. While this is considered a mini review, I will get a full review of the BCN3D Sigma at a later date after I've spent more than 10 days with the printer. I know what you may be thinking, 10 days is quite a long time, but in reality it's not. I have to split up my 3D printing and the time I'm allowed per day to spend on it, and that time is anywhere between two to three hours. And with all of the things I have to do for printing, that really didn't leave enough time to get a good full idea of what this Sigma is capable of. So in summary, consider this a mini review put on hold until I can have the machine for longer to get a better idea of how well it works over time. However, in the meantime, if you can get your hands on one of these machines, I highly recommend you do it. It's awesome. Well, there we go. That's my mini review on hold for the BCN 3D Sigma 3D printer. A big thanks to Preed over at Designbox 3D for loaning this printer to me to get an idea of how well it works. Also, a big thanks to BCN 3D for believing in me and loaning me a printer at a future date for a long period of time so I can get an idea of how well this works over time. Hey, don't forget to give this a thumbs up if you like this printer or you like the idea of independent dual extruders. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. That button over there is for Patreon, and if you have a dollar or more a month you'd like to pledge to the channel to financially support it, you can do it through there. I don't require that. All I really need from you is social high fives. And speaking of high fives, as always, high five.